big confusion tonight in the world of football and amongst Chelsea fans. It has been reported that negotiations for Enzo Fernandez to Chelsea have collapsed. Benfica gave up selling him outside the clause after several days of negotiations. The Portuguese club has already informed the English club that now only the clause of 120 million euros paid in one payment will do. And it's from CL uh, Murdo, who was one of the lead journalists, one of the lead journalists in breaking the news originally. But he originally reported that Chelsea have accelerated today and have offered £127 million to get the deal done. So the journalist reporting that the deal is off is the same person that's reported Chelsea have offered €7 million Euros more than Benfica are now demanding. What is actually going on with Enzo Fernandez to Chelsea? Is it really off the table? Is it really done and dusted? Are we being told the truth? Hit the like and the share button. Let's go. Cesar Luis Melo here, the journalist, the Argentinian from Buenos Aires that broke the news tonight that Enzo Fernandez to Chelsea Football Club is off, is the same guy that originally broke the news. We shouted him out on the football terrace. He's been one of the main sources we have cited over the course of this transfer saga. The story has changed. The conversation has changed. And what do Chelsea fans believe? What do you believe? I'm going to be honest, I'm confused. I'm not saying he's wrong because I said initially, don't disregard him. But his story has done a complete and utter 180. Of course, we've seen Fabrizio Romano state that Chelsea's official proposal for Enzo Fernandez was never 120 million or 127 million. The final proposal made was 85 million. But Fabrizio Romano himself here, quoted by Simon Phillips, says Chelsea will push this week to sign Enzo Fernandez, and it's really advanced. But it's not complete yet. Chelsea would ideally like a different structure to the 120 million euro clause, but the player really wants to join. So even Fabrizio Romano here has, according to this quote here from Simon Phillips, spoke of this 120 clause that Chelsea are willing to pay. Damasio stated they were going to pay 127. Damasio is one of the most credible transfer voices out there. And of course, this young man that flew to notoriety over this transfer claimed it was done at 1.30 in three installments and was shared by many, many huge Chelsea aggregators who are very picky with who they share. So what to believe? What to believe? You know, what we have done on the terrace, what we always do. We share with you the trending news. We give you, I give you my opinion. You in the comment section, give me yours. But what of this one. It is, in my opinion, the most confusing transfer I've ever come across. Because pretty much every journalist out there either said 120 to 127 to 130 was offered, or they spoke like it was. But they may not have personally made the claim, but no one anywhere at any point has said 85 million. There was talks last night, and we're getting detail about the talks, the structure. The structure, the structure, the structure. What Chelsea wants to do, it's not done yet. But the structure is the final key. Now we're being told 85 million. Why was the 85 million not released last night? Why was the information not released in the last two, three, four days to Chelsea fans? That's the confusing factor here. And by the time you watch this video, this story may have changed again. Because if, if we're being absolutely honest, one journalist that I've seen so far. I'm actually checking Twitter as I'm recording this to see. But no one else other than uh, Carlos has stated that the deal is over as of now. Duncan Castle says um, has actually stated here that Benfica are unhappy with Chelsea's attempt to sign um, Fernandez at reduced fees. So Duncan Castle is now reporting on the same um, on the uh, uh, the same story 
that uh, uh, Carlos did, but nobody else prior to that had done. So this is going to be a painful one. This is legitimately going to be a painful one for Chelsea fans because of the consistency of report, the level of report stating that they were paying over the odds. We were broken down by many a journalist that they were doing this to circumvent FFP, to keep the costs down. There was so much detail. There was so much time for Chelsea to come out and say, this is not the case. Maybe this is a situation where Chelsea couldn't get the structure done and Benfica have ended it. And Chelsea now are just trying to save a bit of face. Maybe that's what the situation is in reality, as opposed to they never offered over that. Because what we know for a fact is they don't want to pay 120 million euros in a lump sum. They don't want to pay that much out. They want to spread the cost. And they wanted to do it big. They didn't want to get into a bidding war in the summer with him. Too many, as I say, too many credible journalists, the Matt Laws of this world, the Ben Jacobs of this world, and umpteen others, the Marzios, all said the same thing. So I'm confused. The question is, though, what next? What comes next now for um, Chelsea? And we know that they're looking at Mahalo Mudrik. We know that Mudrik is a player that they are looking at. They know that Mudrik is a player that they are very, very interested in indeed. And Fabrizio Romano himself um, this evening has stated on his YouTube channel that Chelsea have been calling Shakhtar people close to um, Mudrik um, to explain their idea, to attack the player and to also explain the project that they have. This is real. They are, they are looking at this deal with more haste. And I think if you're an Arsenal fan tonight, maybe you become a little bit more worried. Maybe you become a little bit more frustrated. Maybe you become a little bit more worried about the situation because a bit more worried about the situation because now they have this money. And multiple journalists now are talking about Mudrik and Chelsea. It was um, Delaney who earlier on today, and I'm just going to get this quote up because I want to make sure I get this right, stated, and I'm waiting for this to load in front of me. Um, he, he turned Simon Phillips actually turned around and said, Chelsea hold an interest uh, but the feeling on, amongst sources is that Arsenal are the front runners, but it feels like Chelsea could um, make a large bid for him. Uh, Mikel Delaney, who's actually on my TL here, and I want to read this out because I want to get this quote absolutely right for you in terms of what's been said. But he stated that the Chelsea owner, Todd Bowley, has made it clear to Shakhtar that they will trump any offer that Arsenal make. And maybe we've seen the acceleration of Chelsea and Mudrik today because Chelsea had already pulled out of this deal for Endo Fernandez, and it's just taken time for the news to catch up. But it's certainly been an exciting, and it's certainly been an exhilarating day in relation to this transfer. I don't think we can get away from that. Does it mean it's over? Does it mean it's dead? Enzo Fernandez, I'm talking, no. Does it mean they're going to win the race for Mahalo Mudrik? It doesn't mean that either because Arsenal are the front runners and Arsenal still feel confident according to the journalists and the tier one sources that are reporting it. I'm just giving you that information so that we can equally express our opinions off of the back of it. But I get a feeling the transfer window is going to accelerate over the next 48 hours. It really, really is. Chelsea have got a big game tomorrow. It will probably quieten down. There's an opportunity here for Arsenal to act with Mudrik. Because if Arsenal get Mudrik and Enzo's off the table, where next to Chelsea go this, this, this window? They need players. They need players to improve. They're sitting in 10th. And the likes of Enzo were seen as this player to come in and spearhead that midfield to get them back into top four contention. The question is now, what comes next? And Arsenal fans, are you feeling pressure because of this? Are you feeling worried because of this? And Man United fans, I think you've got to look at Jao Felix here. Could this now be what Chelsea needed to go, right, okay, well, we won't get Mudrik, we, we won't get Enzo, but we've got the money now to go and get Jao Felix to bring him in. But is Jao Felix what's needed? Is another striker needed at Chelsea? Where's that creativity going to come from? I felt that's why they were more looking at the, the Enzos and the Mudriks, more creative players in their own right. Lots of questions, and I want you to answer them, the football terrace. Make sure like buttons have been smashed. Get your comments in below. But until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you.